Welcome back to my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit that bell so you are notified of all upcoming videos. Today's video is a Black History Month spotlight on the sit-ins of 1960. The sit-ins of 1960 was a sit-in movement that spread to more than 55 cities in 13 states within a three-month period. It resulted in the formation of the Student Executive Committee for Justice, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and it all started with the Greensboro Four. The Greensboro Four are David Richmond, Franklin McLean, Ezell Blair Jr., now Zabriel Kazan, and Joe McNeil. The Greensboro sit-in was a civil rights protest that started February 1st, 1960 through June of 1960. On February 1st, 1960, four young African-American students staged a sit-in at a segregated Woolworths lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina, and refused to leave after being denied service. The sit-in movement soon spread to college towns throughout the South. In the late afternoon of Monday, February 1st, 1960, the four young men entered the F.W. Woolworth store in Greensboro, North Carolina. The North Carolina a and students were dressed in coats and ties as they stepped across the threshold of the department store. They browsed the store and went to the cashier with the everyday items that they needed. They stuffed the receipts in their jacket pockets and with racing hearts turned to their ultimate purpose. They had stayed up most of Sunday night talking, but as they walked towards the Woolworths lunch counter, fatigue was replenished with the rush of adrenaline. Today, only two of the four men remain living, Jabriel Kazan and Joseph McNeil. The movement to desegregate lunch counters began in Greensboro, North Carolina, but the nation was watching Atlanta, the South's center of commerce and influence. In early February 1960, shortly after the Greensboro sit-ins began, Morehouse College students met at the site of the former Yates and Milton's drugstore with students from Atlanta University Center. Inspired by the students' sit-ins at Woolworth lunch counters in Greensboro, North Carolina, Morehouse students Lonnie King, Julian Bond, and Joseph Pierce laid the groundwork for what would become a seminal phase of the civil rights movement. Side note, this picture taken by the British Foreign Press is my father, who was the president of Morehouse College student body in 1960 and was part of the Atlanta sit-ins helping to organize students from the Atlanta University Center. The Atlanta University Center was comprised of six HBCUs, Atlanta University, Clark College, Interdenominational Theological, Morehouse College, Spelman College, and Morris Brown. Students were committed to the principles of nonviolent disobedience as taught by Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. Atlanta students conducted marches, pickets, and sit-ins that resulted in the desegregation in public and private facilities that denied services or access to people of color. Thanks to the Atlanta student movement, the city began to live up to its slogan, a city too busy to hate. The above is a picture of students from the Atlanta University Center conducting a sit-in in one of the lunch counters in the city of Atlanta. 
On March 15, 1960, police arrested more than 75 students from the Atlanta University Center in sit-ins across the city of Atlanta. Here's a picture of myself, my son, and my father taken in Greensboro, North Carolina, shortly after he had received an award for his involvement in the Atlanta sit-ins on the 50th anniversary of the event. In 1960, representatives from the Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, organized college students in New Orleans to stage sit-ins at local lunch counters. On September 9, 1960, at F.W. Woodworth's on Canal and Rampart, five Black and two white CORE protesters were arrested after a five-hour sit-in. On September 17, 1960, CORE tried again at the McCrory's nearby on Canal Street. There were four college students, Larry Goldfinch, a white student who studied at Tulane, Rudy Lombard, Cecil Carter Jr. of Dillard University, and Arintha Castle Haley, who was a student at Southern. The four students walked in and sat quietly. And when they refused to leave, they were arrested. The McCroy group called the Core Four became well known nationally because they were convicted of criminal anarchy in a case that went all the way to the US Supreme Court. Though New Orleans had no segregation ordinances, the mayor, Chep Morrison, who said the sit-ins would not be tolerated, set the tone from City Hall, a factor in the Supreme Court's ruling in favor of the core four. In other cities, sit-ins and picket lines achieved their goals in months or in days. But for the next two years, New Orleans stores continued to segregate. And for those two years, CORE was there picketing and doing sit-ins. Just as another side note, my mother was involved in the New Orleans sit-ins. I hope you guys have enjoyed this informational historical event from Black history with the 1960s sit-ins that were conducted across the country in 55 cities and 13 states. Here I gave you a highlight of three of the cities. The city of Greensboro, North Carolina, where it was the Greensboro Four, the city of Atlanta, where you had six HBCUs in this. And then of course, the city of New Orleans, where the core four took their case all the way to the Supreme Court. Please leave me comments, like and share this video, and let me know what you thought about it. I'll see you guys in my next video. But until then, I offer you guys peace and blessings from the West Side. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys the next time. Bye-bye now.